the ninth year of this particular war in Afghanistan, and we think that it's time that Gordon Brown got the message of its lack of popularity. The death toll is too high, the cost is too high, and there is no clear purpose to this war whatsoever. And we're here today on this dreadful weather just before Christmas to send Gordon a reminder from people who have suffered in a way that none of us want to suffer because of this particular war. Statement by the Defence Deputy Secretary of Defence, Paul Wolfowitz, December the 10th, 2001. <laughs> And he said, the American people have to be prepared for the fact that we may be hunting the Taliban and Al-Qaeda in Afghanistan months from now. We're eight years down the road. I don't know what happened to months from now. But 240 souls have been killed. And I understand another soldier has been killed today, which brings it up to 104 this year alone. And I and those around this table would like our troops to be brought home from Afghanistan. This is a this is a war that was underfunded, under equipped and under false pretenses. Just feel that if all the soldiers should come out of Afghanistan, no one has ever beat the Afghans and I don't see why our government or the American government should be arguing about what they can do. It's a travesty of a war, it's immoral, it's unjust, there's just nothing that one can say to redeem it at all. There's no excuses whatsoever. Thank you. And my, my son actually died in Iraq, and I, I thought when they got the Iraq inquiry that, we, that I would be finished, but it now it turns out that this is exactly, it's going exactly the same way that the Iraq war did. Uh, we've got the, the soldiers are there, nobody seems to know why they're there. They, mm. they, every, every time you ask them, they, they give you a different reason. And if it's the war against terror, they're having to take money from uh, and close bases in Britain to fund the, the war is costing too much both in money and in lives. That will, one life would be too much to lose on what is an immoral war. Um, I had a close family member um, blown up in Afghanistan in July. Uh, the, the, the chap wasn't killed but he was injured and he's recuperating and, and it, hopefully he's okay. So unlike my colleagues I've, I've not suffered you know, like they've suffered. But I think now is the time to stop bringing the troops on. And I don't want to be sitting here next year with 203 guys dead. That's what worries me. Most what we do forget is about all the appalling casualties coming back every day to Sully Oak. Young men, legs blown off, arms blown off, lives ruined. And I do think at this Christmas time we should be thinking of them as well because their lives are ruined. And this government is ruining them. They made war on, on Iraq. They have weapons of mass destruction. Everybody knew they didn't have weapons of mass destruction. There was a United Nations inspector there for a month looking for these mass, for these wars. We want the war, they said, for mass destruction. Only now, all these years later, do they come up and say they never had weapons of mass destruction. Well, United Nations inspectors was there before looking for them. And that was that. Why did we fight the Second World War? Why did we take the risks and why did we lose all these things? Because Germany attacked another country. At least that country had some way of defending himself. These countries are defenseless. We're going into them, we're massacring them, and their absolutely can't do anything. I heard people in this country said on the news, oh, they'll attack us, they're going to do terrible things to us. They couldn't even defend themselves. Never mind terrible things. They have no navy, no big bombing force. They have no tanks, every tanks. We had everything. We are doing the same thing as the Germans. And we fought and risked our lives for, we're doing the same thing that we risk our lives to fight the Germans. And as I see it, therefore, as far as I'm concerned and others are concerned, if we can risk our lives to there, we could, we could try to defend what we risk our lives doing and we don't have to risk it this time. Just be against this war. If we keep this happen, there'll not only be a second world war, there'll be a massacre. I just think that we're fighting for a politician's agenda and it ain't the politicians who are dying or the people whose agenda we're fighting for who are dying, it's the soldiers and it's the people who are losing their family, their loved ones and basically their lives. Um, I'm here because I'm not exactly sure what our mission is in Afghanistan. Um, cast my, my mind back to 2001, we were told it was to track down Bin Laden, um, but that's a name that 
nobody seems to be to be mentioning anymore. It's as if Bin Laden no longer matters. Um, I haven't heard Gordon Brown mention Bin Laden for some time now, and to my understanding, that's the reason. That's what they told us in 2001 that we were going in for. Um, and then they told <coughs> us it was to destroy the open harvest. Well, Afghanistan is now having record open harvest there, so that's a uh, failure on that point. And now Gordon Brown seems to be saying that is to promote democracy. Well, we've just had an election in um, Afga Afghanistan. That would have, to be honest with you, I think Mr. Mugabe of Zimbabwe would have, would have been embarrassed of that election. Well, I think most people in this country haven't got a clue what we're doing in Afghanistan. It's, it's, it, the, 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 the mission has changed, hasn't it, considerably. I think a lot of us would concede that originally they had more of a case for going into Afghanistan than Iraq because allegedly uh, we all believed Al-Qaeda was planning atrocities like, like the uh, attack on the World Trade Center from, from Afghanistan. The Afghan gov people, government of the time wouldn't take action against them. So it was, on, it was reasonable at that time for America in particular and Britain to aid her to, to go into Afghanistan to stop that. But they quickly drove uh, Osama bin Laden out or yeah. let him escape, I, I, I believe they let him escape. Yeah. Uh, so he's not there now. Al Qaeda and the terrorists who planned these international atrocities are not in Afghanistan. So what the hell are we doing there? Um, you know, we're, we're, not, uh, we're not liberating it, we're not bringing democracy. I think most people would agree that uh, it would have been a good idea to have organised democratic elections to let the Afghan people choose their own government. But if you can't do that in eight years, they're never going to do it. So we, we might as well get out and leave them to do it themselves. Because we, we haven't done it. The ele election they've had is a farce, a travesty, a rigged election. Opium is... is uh, production is higher than ever. Women are still subjugated. We do, we're doing no good there. We're just frittering away our the blood of our children on, on a, a pointless yep. war. America with all its power and all its weaponry and all its, its uh, uh, technical ability can't, couldn't subjugate Vietnam, can't subjugate uh, Afghanistan, any country where the people uh, resist and are opposed for whatever reason, whether good or bad, but where the people are, are determined to, to uh, resist and fight, they can't, they can't take them over because they don't know how to fight that kind of war. They haven't, they haven't learned any lessons from Vietnam. And it's clear, it's also fairly clear that America is not really interested. Democracy, installing democracy is not their game. Their game, they stated it, clear spectrum dominance. They want full control of land, sea and air and they'll do a deal with any dictatorship, with any corrupt government and they'll undermine and, and uh, plot against any democratic government in order to achieve that dominance. They don't, they're not in the business of building democracy and I think it should be compulsory for every politician in this country to, to listen to our, what's Harold Pinter's noble lecture last night. Very concise reason to the point and he made his point about America's record has got the most atrocious record in, in South America in particular in practically every country they've undermined democratic governments installed supported and condoned dictatorships and death squads and they do they'll do that in in Afghanistan if they can be in in charge in control that's what they're after and we should not be part of that we should dissociate ourselves from America I'm not anti-American I love the American people but I despise and detest the American government yes. that we've had for the last 30, 40 years because they've all been playing the same game. And Jim, um, there's been much criticism of the Afghan so-called democracy. What's your thoughts of the Afghan government that's in power now? Mohammed Karzai. It's completely unrepresentative, isn't it? I mean, it, it, by all accounts, that election was rigged, was you know, a, a total farce. And as I say, if, if they can't organise an election in, in eight, nine years, then we should give up and leave them to it. Hey. Hello. Where are you from? What do you do with that? I, uh, I have a YouTube site called Four Man Films. Oh, good for you. Yeah, thank you. I would like to see it someday. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, good for you. Yeah, <laughs>